Hey, what's up guys? It's Covert Code here, and welcome back to part 3 of our Zero to Hero series. Now, last time we left off at printing, so pretty much this was our script, we learned how to print, uh, that we can use multiple different, um, you know, data types you call them, like um, numbers, decimals, strings, and booleans, okay? Today, we're gonna be learning about variables. Now, variables are quite easy when you get the hang of them, okay? So let me just clear up the script. Um, now, I'm not sure if you guys have ever done algebra. I'm gonna assume that you have not, um, just because this series is for absolute beginners who have no idea about coding. But um, variables, you can think of these as like boxes, okay? So imagine a variable as a box, and you have a name on that box, okay? So... Um, you may have a box full of candy and you call that candy box, for example, okay? Now, if you look inside that box of candy, you're gonna find candy, obviously. So, let me illustrate what, I've, what I'm saying here using code and then I'll explain it to you. So, candy box is equal to candy, okay? So, this is the general structure of how variables are written. Now, um... I'm not going to be using the local keyword, which is this, which you might see around, you know, before variable names. I'm going to be covering that in the future. I'm just going to keep it simple without the local keyword, just because this, again, is for people who have never coded before. Now, remember when I said we put a name tag on the, bo the box of candy and we called it the candy box? This is the name of the variable, okay? So we're calling our variable candy box and whenever we speak about candy box we are referring to this variable okay so if you see candy box anywhere else in the the you know the script then just know that we're referring to this variable here okay candy box variable now the equal sign determines what's inside the variable so what's inside the candy box and we said that inside the candy box there's candy so we just put a text or a string um, inside of that variable. So if we look inside candy box, we're going to find candy as a text, okay? Let's do something else here. Let's say we want to have x, just x, okay? Um, and we're just gonna put 20 inside of x, okay? y, we're, we're going to put 0 0.5 inside of y. And let's say we're gonna put another variable here. Now, this is going to be called subscribe subscribed okay um now i'm gonna use boolean expressions for this like last time okay um so it can either be true or false now ideally hopefully guys that's true that you subscribe but let's assume you haven't okay so subscribed is equal to false okay so our variable subscribed contains false so whenever you mention subscribed okay so if i say subscribed like that Okay, this means false because that's what the equal sign means. Okay, this means that this, uh, this here is equal to this. Okay, and that also goes, um, actually, never mind, just this is equal to this. Okay, just to keep it simple, guys. Now, you can also reference variables. You know, that's the point of using variables. Variables are used to keep your code nice and neat um, and not have random variables like this. Um, not variables, just random things around like this. Like, what does that 20 even mean, you know? Like, what's 20 mean? Why is there 20 here, you know? So, if I wanted to write a complex script, and I want to say, um, you know, what's the speed of a rocket, for example? So, rocket speed, I could call it anything I want, but I'm going to call it rocket speed, because that's what, you know, this variable is going to entail, pretty much. And the rocket speed is going to be, uh, I don't know, 15. You know, so our rocket speed is 15 and I can actually use that variable now. You know, I don't have to print out 15 anymore. I could print out rocket speed. Oh, that typing is horrible. Um, so you can print out rocket speed and this will print out 15. Okay, let me just clear the output here. Um, this will print out 15. Why? Because rocket speed is equal to 15. So let me just click on this arrow here and press run and... 
Go to print out 15. Again, I if you don't know what the, like the rest of this means, I covered this in the previous video. Link in the description below. Um, so if you don't know how printing works, then just go watch that video I made. But essentially, that's how variables work. Now, you can use these variables, again, using that continuation thing I said, um, you know, in the previous video. Um, so, rocket speed is 15. Okay, and how much does the rocket cost? So, rocket cost is equal to 20,000, for example, okay? Now, I could say, okay, the rocket speed is continuation, like last time, guys. Rocket speed, okay? I could copy this paste it and we can say the rocket's cost is and just put rocket cost and now this is going to say how much the speed is and how much it costs okay as you guys can see right here now you could also perform arithmetic operations on these so if i have the initial rocket cost okay so that means the base rocket cost. So, you know, buying the rocket in general from the store, this is how much it costs, okay? But there's taxes you have to pay for the rocket, okay? Imagine there's taxes for some reason that you have to pay on the rocket. Now, we can say that the tax on a rocket is tax on rocket is equal to 10, actually, uh, 1,000, okay? So it's 1,000 tax on a rocket. That means that you have to pay 1,000 on top of 20,000 and what I mean by this is you have to pay 21,000 to purchase a rocket tax included okay so the way we do this is instead of us actually you know using the initial rocket cost which would be inaccurate because this will say 20,000 when in reality the actual cost of the rocket is 21,000 okay we're going to have final rocket cost okay and this is going to be initial rocket cost, so that's 20,000, plus how much you have to pay in taxes. In this case, it's tax on rocket. And this is going to be replaced right here. Press run, and it's going to say that the rocket's cost is 21,000, okay? And you can do all sorts of mathematical operations. You can multiply this, so that's how you multiply, guys. Um, you can subtract, that's how you subtract. You can divide, like that. Um, you know, you could even use the math class, which I will cover in the future. Um, but for this case, we're just gonna, uh, we're just gonna add, okay? One other handy thing that I think you should learn at this point is comments. So, comments help you guys organize your code. You know, as I said, variables help you organize your code as well. So, use comments in pairs with variables. So, use them both at the same time to help keep your code neat. So, I can say that these are variables, now that you actually know what these are. Um, and I can say that this is a show the rocket uh, stuff, or whatever, okay? Um, so, the way to use var I mean comments is uh, two um, minuses, essentially. So, two minuses like this. You can see that the text color changes um, to this gray. If you have one, that won't work, okay? So... You can type anything and the script will ignore your comments. So the comments is not for the actual script, it's just for the programmer to actually, you know, make it easier for them to actually read the code they wrote. And if you guys want to write something a bit longer than this and need multiple lines, you would use the same two minuses and two square brackets like this. Okay, and then just press enter like that. And again, two minuses and to closing square brackets and anything you write inside of these will be a comment okay it will be ignored by the script so that's it on variables guys like subscribe and you know leave suggestions in the comments below about the things that you want to learn that i should make into videos okay thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys in the next one